All right, praise God. Well, I've been, uh, man, I've really been encouraged by what God has been um, revealing to me recently about how God wants us to be uh, more than overcomers. He wants us to completely dominate our enemy. Uh, there is this concept, and, and I'm going to get into it uh, quickly with regard to our military, that was established back in the Civil War. And some of you, got any history buffs here today? Uh, about, okay, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> There, there's this concept that America has had since the Civil War, and it's, it's overwhelming force. Anybody familiar with that term? Overwhelming force. So this started actually, and, and it uh, originated with Lincoln. Everybody thinks of Lincoln being such a wonderful person. But did you know that uh, he established this concept of unconditional surrender? And completely uh, subduing the South in order for them to to give in. And so, for a long time, he actually had um, he had several generals that he tried to get to to get some victories going because the North had far superior numbers of of weapons of men. But his generals would go into battle and instead of, uh, you know, getting a, a, a win and then, and then following them, they would, they would fall back and just let everybody take a break for a while. Let's sip some tea for a while before we go to the next, <laughs> the next battle. And what he needed was somebody to go in and, and not try to be nice to anybody when we got done with this, but to completely overwhelm and that's what it required. There's a reason why we have the freedom that we have from slavery today. It's because of this concept. I thought it was really a kind of a neat correlation. Because what the enemy wants to do is to, to, to just give enough uh, intimidation that we just, you know, we might make some headway on something, but then we fall back. And what, what, what we have as an advantage in God is, and what he gives us is not just a passive a getting along with our enemy, but a complete subduing of him. And so General Ulysses S. Grant, and they put in between there, unconditional grant, unconditional surrender grant, he would go in and he would just say, you know what, you have to completely surrender. We're not talk, talking any, any terms at all. You, you have to completely surrender. And, and one thing that they, that's really sad, you know, the Civil War is, was a bloody war. I mean, there was, there was I mean, it, it really tears your heart out to think about all these young men that gave their lives on these battlefields, you know, and they would just walk out there in lines and just to be shot. But when it came time to actually win the battle, you could not be afraid to lose lives. You couldn't, you couldn't be concerned about what you were going to lose. You had to be intent on what you were going to gain to the point of not holding back anything. And Grant was considered to be kind of a, a rough character in this regard because he would send his soldiers in and, and massive amounts of them would get killed, but he would just keep coming. And they called it uh, unrelenting hammer. He would just keep hammering them. Just keep hammering them. And there was, another, there was another general that came along, and his name was General Sherman. And what General Sherman did is he actually, they found that it wasn't just the army that, that had to be subdued, that had to be overwhelmed. It was actually the populace of the South. Because the populace of the South was who supported yeah. the army. Uh-huh. And until you broke the heart of the support, yes. you could not win over you had to overwhelm everybody and so so sherman would go in and he would burn down cities he would mess up their infrastructure because they were the south was a proud bunch they were wealthy and they thought that they could you know they they could keep their way and the only way they could be subdued was to be completely overwhelmed and that's what they did even though we had the superior forces they still had to be overwhelmed. Yeah. 
And you see this continuance of this principle in American uh, approach to war ever since. When we went in anywhere, D-Day, we just had to just storm the, the, the shores. We had, to, we had to just overtake them with such a, an abundance of force. It had to be overwhelming. With Japan, we talked about that already. <laughs> I mean, we were burning down their cities before we ever dropped an, uh, an atom bomb. And they still would not give in. Because an enemy has to be completely overwhelmed in order to be defeated. This enemy that's against us, he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And the only way to overcome him is not to just build a wall so he doesn't get in. We talked about it's not just a hedge of protection that's going to protect us against this guy. No, we have to become in an offense. We have to come towards him. We have to completely subdue him. And here's the wonderful thing about this. This changes your whole perspective of what's coming at you in your life and how to deal with it. Because we've been given weapons of warfare that are mighty through God to pull down strongholds, not just to pull them down, but to stomp all over them. Amen? Amen? This is how God does stuff. And so this is what he's given us. So we've been looking at this. In the first week, we, we kind of unfolded several different aspects of this. And last week, we looked at, at how the enemy wants to come against our identity. And he wants to take something in our past that labels us as a failure in some way, in any way at all. And he wants to cause us to be intimidated by that and to keep from uh, occupying and being who we are supposed to be. And so what Jesus came to do, and in the blood of Jesus, is the removal of any claim that the enemy could have against us in this area. But then we have to get active in our response to it. Because it becomes just like the north. We have all the weapons with regard to our identity. We have the scriptures that declare who we are. But we have to take the field of battle and wield those weapons against the enemy and start declaring with confidence and boldness, who we are, and say, no, you are not going to tell me that this is my issue. The blood of Jesus has taken care of anything that would come against me. Amen? But who's supposed to do that? Not your pastor, not your mom, not your dad, not your kids. (laughs) You are. He's called you to be that mighty man of valor. And we, most of the time we, when we hear this, we're just like Gideon. We're looking around. We're afraid on the threshing floor. We're, we're worried about the enemy coming against us. And God says, forget about that enemy coming against you. You're, you're the one that they are going to fear. I'm calling you a mighty man of valor. But what takes you from where you're at from intimidation and being afraid of what's coming at us in the world or, you know, whatever. What takes you from that is revelation of who you really are and then taking the field of battle with the weapons you've been given. And remember what we saw that those weapons are, that they're they're things in the mind, right? They're, they're, They're perceptions in the mind. We take them captive and we say, no, you are not going to stay in this mind of mine. (laughs) You don't get to live. (laughs) What was that one guy? (laughs) What was that one? Uh, I think Rush Limbaugh said that that he has a free room in their mind. Uh, He gets to occupy the... Yeah, he he lives in their mind rent free. That was just a funny... uh, term but sometimes we we're allowing the 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 enemy to live in our mind rent free and to keep us tied up in fear and all kinds of junk that jesus came to free us from amen but till you get that kind of an attitude you just let him have his way just don't slam the door and as you go on in there just, you know, just <laughs> wish you wouldn't say, make so much noise up there. You know, <laughs> no, 
Just get him all the way out. Just yeah. beat him up and take your, take your dog to him or something. You know? <laughs> right? We, we've got the weapons. We, we, take, we take authority over that. Amen? Now, I'm telling you what. Revela- it, it requires revelation of this. And so it, 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 it's like anything that you do. Any, anybody, you know... <laughs> We've got some friends in here that are getting new properties and stuff. And, 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 and uh, uh, you know, when, you, when you're getting into that realm in your life or you're wanting to occupy a, a ranch or something, what do you start to do? You start meditating on that a lot, don't you? Yeah. You're never going to go and, and even purchase something. You're not, you know, uh, if you're wanting a new vehicle, you don't just... It doesn't just randomly drop in your lap. You start researching it. You start meditating on it. You start getting a vision. You start seeing yourself in that driver's seat. You start occupying it before you ever go there, don't you? And so the same thing has to happen in this room. This is way more important than any car, any property you're ever going to get. This is eternal life and, and, a, and a realm of freedom from the fear of this world con- completely that only comes when it becomes something that's more important to you than those other things. Remember what Jesus said? He said, he said seek first the kingdom of God. All that stuff you think is so important, it'll just come following after you as if, as if you didn't even care about it. It just happens to be there now. Right? But it re- it's going to require some adjustment, some revelation in our mind. It's going to require hanging out with the truth of it a little bit. So that's why we have to hammer. I'm going to be uh, Ulysses S. Grant. I'm going to hammer on this just a little bit more because there's, there's other aspects of this. It's not just our identity. Because we're not called to be Rambos. And actually, I was looking up some, some stuff on this from a military standpoint. And the first thing they, they teach you, and I, I'll get some verification from this so you can say yes or no on this. First thing they teach you when you go to boot, boot camp is it's not all about you. It's about teamwork. And you're not going to accomplish anything on your own. As soon as, you're on, as soon as you think it's about you, you're doomed to failure. And this, this little article that I did see, it, it called it a... Uh, uh, a Rambo syndrome that you just cannot have. Because the guy next to you, no matter how bad his breath is or how much you don't like his haircut or anything else, he's the one that's going to have your back in battle. And we need each other. God doesn't, you know, it's amazing when we got saved, he didn't say, now you're saved, have fun on your own. We weren't saved into that, were we? And you know what? We weren't saved into just a personal relationship with God either. (laughs) We're saved into the body of Christ. Has a wonderful head, Jesus. But it has all these other parts that are required for our victory over the enemy. And this requires revelation. So many of us are, man, I can do this. I got this handled. God just let, you know, I, I, I got this made. But God didn't call us in to, to, the, to, to tell us that we should just believe to be able to do it ourselves. No, he, he called, you know who he, he, uh, he encourages and he lifts up is the, the humble. What is the humble? That's the one that says, I recognize my need for somebody else in my life. So much that I'm going to commit myself to this. All right, can I just have a little personal confession time for you right now? All right, we can all kind of get a little bit really like this. And I can put a veil up here and I can talk through it like, you know, I'm confessing. Uh, I tend to to, to want to just stay home, study, just be by myself. And my wife is very wonderful. I'm just going to lift up my wife this morning because she's the most wonderful treasure that God has given me in my life. And I just want to publicly acknowledge it. Even I'm going to, I'm going to, hold on just a second. I got to post this on Facebook. (laughs) But we, we go to these, we go to these meetings 
And, uh, you know, I don't initiate those kinds of things because I'm way too stinking proud or something. I don't know. But, no, I, I just, she, she gives herself to this more so, and, it, and it's a blessing to me. It's, it's, she's at my help meet. She helps me in so many ways. But um, we went to this, this meeting in Alexandria, and, and I was getting ready, and I was thinking about what I'm going to be teaching, too, and I'm thinking, you know, there's, there's this necessity in us before God to recognize that I have to have other people in my life. Now, we as a body here, I mean, this is why we're here right now. There's this humility before God that we, we're not just showing up to get brownie points and to feel good like we got that out of our way, out of the way for the week, you know, now we can go do whatever else we want to do. No, there's this understanding that God has called me into a body where I'm not complete on my own. Yeah, that's right. Now, Christ has come to be complete in me, but the way God has designed this is for us to be complete together. And we cannot be complete on our own. We have to. And so this overwhelming God response that he wants to have in the world, he always does it through people. And he does it through multiple people. Now, he'll, he'll get somebody like, like Moses, but you, did you know that Moses didn't do it all on his own? Did you know he had a father-in-law named Jethro that came up and, and, and helped him to do all the admin stuff? Lindsay came along to do all the our admin stuff. So, so I'll call you Jethro from now on. <laughs> Can you cipher, though? <laughs> Jeth, Jethro Bodine. What? Yeah, Emma, Emma's been here a long time uh, helping us also. But, but just so many people in different ways. I mean, Daniel does stuff, and it's like, I don't even realize it wasn't getting done until he's gone. You know, it's like, wow, that didn't get done. I didn't even realize it was getting done. Yeah, but but that's, that's how it is, and we, we have to have each other. You know, in the New Testament, um, my namesake, you know, the first martyr, noted martyr anyway, <laughs> he... He was, he was brought in to take care of the, the tables and to do things like that so that the spiritual ones could be studying all the time. And it was so interesting to me that he was the one that was spiritual himself. That you, there's no less of a God gift or, or a spirituality because of what you're doing. In fact, you take that right into whatever you're doing and it becomes essential. And you don't, what the enemy wants to do is to take whatever you're doing and make it look small to you so that you just don't do it. Right. As if it's not making any difference. And, and this, is, this is continual. <laughs> I, I get barraged with this all the time. It just, oh, it just wouldn't matter if you just weren't there, you know. <laughs> Lies. Lies. You tell that to that, to that, that young man on the battlefield. You know, you can have a whole platoon wiped out. And it would say, well, that didn't, no. They were occupying a space that required being occupied. You know? And they gave their life. We know freedom today, not because there was a bunch of people that never went to battle and lost their lives. We we know freedom today because people did. And every life mattered. Amen? And that's 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 what God's called us into. So, <laughs> all right. Well, let, let me get into this because there, there's some really good stuff here that's gonna gonna bless us. Are you excited about this? I can just see, man. You guys, your eyes are just lit up, and you're you're drooling and everything, and um, it's just wonderful. So, overwhelming partnering. So we had five P's, and the first two were purity, and then. Partnering. So what are we looking at when we say partnering? That means it, it requires coming together to accomplish a purpose, right? Take me to the next verse here. So the power of partnership is, is with Christ. And so this is something that, that I saw in, in, with regard to this. Um, actually, my sister, uh, we, we brought my sister in by Zoom at this prayer meeting that we were at. And she was sharing this thing that was very wonderful that I... That, um, uh, having to do with gears. She saw this vision of, of gears. Anybody familiar with gears? I, um, I'll have Michael stand up and give a testimony about gears. <laughs> but it's amazing what gears can accomplish uh, 
that you can take a power source and you can increase it exponentially, can't you? But with the use of gears. And they're actually going in opposite directions, but they're actually, they're, they're, they're causing a greater effect by being joined together than they would on their own. And there's, there's this concept that we see from John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And, and you can say, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, it goes to the heart of our overwhelming force. It's this witness. Can you say witness? <laughs> Not witness, witness. It's this partnering. And so when we see this, so, so many times I've said that, well, good for you, Jesus, you've overcome the world. But that's his point is, we have overcome the world. The reason why we can have peace, we can have confidence, is he says, because I've overcome. What, what is overcome? This is overwhelmingly demolish the powers of the things that look like they're big coming at you. You got tribulation, but know that I have already overwhelmed those things. So how do we make, uh, how does that make any difference to us? How do we have that peace? We get into the witness of it. Okay? So when God does something, he says, we're going to do this together. We're going to do this together, and we're going to completely overwhelm the enemy. All right, give me the next one. So partnership with Christ is an overwhelming force against hell. Now, this is what I really like. In the world, you will have tribulation. What is that? That's stuff coming towards you, right? And you go right into this next thing, and this is, this is what... what um, go ahead and give me that verse. <clears throat> so remember, this is the guy that, that, that denied Jesus three times. <laughs> yeah. And he's having a conversation with Jesus... And he has this revelation, and this is why it's so important for us to get this revelation of this, because it's essential for what God wants to do. Let me just read this in, in the Amplified Version here. And I tell you, you are Peter, uh, which the Greek of that is Petros, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, the Greek Petra, a huge rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church. So what's, what's going on there? He's, he's using even the name of Peter as like an illustration. That you are a part of something that's even going to be bigger. But the revelation, he said, he said, who am I? And he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, the revelation of that was going to be something that he became a part of. And he gives the illustration in this. He said, you're, you're a little rock, but you're going to be part of a big rock. There's going to be a witness that's going to cause you. Now, take, let's, let's go to this next verse or this next slide. And the gates of Hades, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it. And I like this part, or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. So, so what I'm seeing with regard to this is... He said, what you're doing when you get into me, when you get this revelation that I am the Christ, that's the anointed one. You know what that is? That, that's the fullness of God to the point that nothing can hold it back and nothing can contain it. He said, so when you get this revelation of me, it's going to be not just you hiding out in a strong refuge, but you become a part of a Black Hawk helicopter, a tank. Now, not only are you safe, but you're an offensive, overwhelming force that, cannot, that does not have any ability of the enemy to withstand. Can you see that a little bit? <laughs> we need revelation of this. Because he said, you know what? In me, you are going to be an overwhelming force that the enemy cannot. He's got, <laughs> did you know that the enemy has gates up against us? He, he, has, he has lies. He has, he has forces that are wanting to overwhelm us. And he has defenses against us. But you know what? We come against those things. 
by the revelation of withness, okay? You know, I didn't plan that, that word, but that kind of works, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> so the most important part of the body is the head, of course, right? And we identify with that. We love Jesus. We, we magnify him. He's our, he's, he, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. But he hasn't called us into just fellowship with the head. He's called us into fellowship with the body. And this becomes a very critical part of overwhelming the enemy. And, it's, and it becomes something that, you know, we talked about this last week. If this is true, then this is going to be a big part of the enemy's attacks against us. Right? What is, what is an enemy always looking for? He's looking for an area of vulnerability, something he can come in, and, and if he can attack this part, you might have this identity thing going on okay. But if he can get into this part, he can disable you and cause you to be weak in this area. And not only will you not, you'll be back on your heels wishing you didn't feel this bad, wishing you weren't going through all this tribulation, when you should be on your toes going against the enemy. Can you see that? So what the enemy wants to do is challenge you in any one of these areas and make you think that maybe you're okay because you know of enough scriptures or something, right? And he says, but, but this is a part that has to be cared for, this witness. You don't get to be a part of a SEAL team and say, hey guys, I got this island taken care of. You guys go do the rest of it, you know? I was watching this one, this one movie. You know, um, I don't know if you've, you've seen this. It's it's twelve uh, guys that were on horses. Um, you know, right after nine eleven, and they went in and they were supposed to take this one, um, this city, I think. And uh, I didn't see the whole thing, but I, you know, they were on horses, which, what, twelve strong. So they were on horses, so they had they, they, they appeared to be inferior. But if they could call in the coordinates of this area, these bombers would come. You wouldn't even see them coming. These guys would be bombed before. So it wasn't just that they were 12 strong on horses. They were connected to another force that was even greater. You know? And it required this communication. It required this coordination. It required this getting along. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you can't say, well, I know that pilot. I don't like him very well. I don't th- I'm not going to let him get any glory. <laughs> you know? No. There's this, hey, we're on the same team. I, I, I'm not going to be able to defeat these guys on my own. I'm calling in somebody else. And you know what? Those pilots in the air could not do anything without the guys on the ground. Right. It requires both, doesn't it? So the most important part is that head. We got to get connected to the head. But as soon as you're connected to the head, your deliverance doesn't, doesn't just come from the head. It comes from the body. Yeah. And it's been designed this way. Each joined part is a critical part of an overwhelming force. All right. So take me to the next one. I, I think we have an overwhelming God response is teamwork. Next one. So Matthew 18, 19. I also tell you this. If two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask for, my Father in heaven will do it for you. He's given this concept of witness that we need each other. This is why love becomes such a critical part of being joined to the body of Christ. And what what does that love do? It causes you to not recognize the very obvious things. And we all have obvious things, don't we? Yeah, I can really get caught up with my obvious things. (laughs) You know? So it actually starts with us, this this overlooking and recognizing that we need the blood of Jesus to to care for our faults, but also for those other ones. Because what what is that? That's the culmination of love that causes us to be able to be joined together. Why do we come together as a body? Well, you know what? It'd be a whole lot easier. We just wouldn't have to deal with love at all if we just didn't ever have to be around anybody. Wouldn't that be wonderful? 
right? <laughs> and some of the, the, the biggest challenges to uh, being a partner with somebody else is the church itself. Because somebody, for some reason, things that happen in the church can hurt you right to your heart. Has anybody ever been there? It's like, goodness. And it's, it's, it's almost like a missile that came <laughs> that you didn't know was coming. And it's like you don't quite know how to deal with it, right? And so this is where God wants to get right in the middle of that. And he says, Let, let's get together with the head first. Let's get this witness with the head. But then when, you, when you're looking unto me as the author and the finisher of your faith, realize that it's going to affect this way too. Right? Because somehow he's designed that we need to get together with somebody else and even agree before him. You know, oh, but I just have such wonderful prayer times all by myself. <laughs> and we can. Yeah. And we should. But we need each other. Yes, we do. Amen. I mean, Jesus said this. I, now, <laughs> where two or three are gathered together because they are mine, I will be there among them. I'm the bomber. <laughs> you know? I'm the power, but for some reason, God has designed it that we need to be together with. We come together with, and now God gets with. It's almost like God's saying, you know, I just, I don't occupy that space where somebody can do it all on their own, right? As long as you can do it on your own, I don't need to show up. But as soon as you start recognizing that it, it's partnering, it's, it's coming together with the body. He says, oh, now I'll show up with the real fireworks. We'll really make things happen. Necessary. Man, we, 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 have, to get, we have to get revelation of this. And it has to be something that we actually become passionate about. Can, can you see that? <laughs> All right. Give me the next one. So God responds is two with God. Now there's this wonderful example out of, out of the Old Testament. Are y'all doing all right this morning? Yeah. Say, I'm doing all right with this witness. All right, say it real fast and see if, <laughs> no, say, say it real fast three times and see if you can get tongue tied. All right, First Samuel 14, six through seven and then 13 through 16 says, um, so remember, uh, Jonathan has his, his armor bearer. I thought this was really a kind of a precious uh, Example of this. It's just Jonathan and the armor bearer. And they're up against an army that's, that's kind of an overwhelming army. And they're kind of trapped, right? And so uh, Jonathan sneaks off with his armor bearer. And he doesn't just sneak off on his own. He gets God involved. Now, we don't do this as much now. But he said, he said armor bearer, we're going to go up there just you and me. And it's, it's this cliff he has to climb up, right? And he says... If they tell us to go ahead and come up, then we're going to take that as God being with us when we go. And we'll go up there. And he said, God doesn't care how many people there are. He says he can deliver by one or by a thousand. And so he says, the, the uh, armor bearer, don't you like this? There has to be this agreement. There has to be this unity the armor bearer says, yes. Either he's really ignorant or he, he really believes, right? Yes, let's go across to those heathen. There needs to be a recognition of who we're up against. It's, it's kind of, remember what, what David did against the giant? He said this uncircumcised Philistine. There's a placing of our favor with God over what we're up against. What the enemy always wants to do is make what we're up against to be bigger than us. And even this armor bearer said, we're going up against the heathen. They, they don't stand a chance against us. But it's just the two of them. So Jonathan had said to his bodyguard, okay, perhaps the Lord will do a miracle for us, for it makes no difference to him how many enemy troops there are. 
Fine, the youth replied. Do as you think best. I'm with your you heart and soul. I got that inverted, that previous verse. Dave, Jonathan was saying this, but he's agreeing with him here, right? I'm with you heart and soul, whatever you decide. There needs to be this going along with the leadership that God gives us. Amen? And saying, I'm going to be with this. I, I see this as a God thing. So they clambered up on their hands and knees. Can you imagine? They're, they're trying to just barely get up this cliff. And the Philistines fell back as Jonathan and the lad killed them right and left. Keep going. About 20 men in all. And their bodies were scattered over about half an acre of land. Man, they're having to deal with real bloody stuff, aren't they? But what showed up for them was the witness of God when they moved together. There's this coordination, this partnership that God's looking for. He's looking for people to be together. And he said, I'm going to show up. Keep going here. This is really interesting. Suddenly, panic broke out throughout the entire Philistine army over two guys. Two guys that were with each other. And because of that, they were with God. You see the, the, over, the overwhelming force that showed up through two people. Isn't that amazing? Yes. <laughs> and God's, you know, we want God to move. And he said, well, I need y'all to be together for first of all. Right. Come on. <laughs> and then I need you to come together before me and to be in agreement with each other. Yeah. Not be finding out what's wrong with each other. Right. right? Come on. <laughs> and then God will show up. He will do things beyond our imagination. Suddenly panic broke out through the entire Philistine army and even among the raiders. And just then there was a great earthquake increasing the terror. Saul's lookouts in Gibeah saw a strange sight. The vast army of the Philistines began to melt away in all directions. Who's getting overwhelmed here? You know what? When we come together in partnership, there is an application of an overwhelming God response. Amen. Can you see how powerful this is? How necessary it is? How much we can humble ourselves to this concept and say, God, I'm going to apply my faith in this area. And when I'm up against something, it's not just me anymore. <laughs> Amen. We're joining together. This is why it does my heart so good when somebody calls me up and says, hey, can you believe with me about something? Yeah. You know? I say, oh, thank you. We're getting God involved here because yeah. we're coming together. Amen? Yeah. Can you see how essential this is? The second P? All right. Each part requires partnership for purpose, power, and prevailing. Okay, so Romans 12, 3. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Why, why would that be a problem? It's because you lose the need for partnership when you're thinking highly of yourself. Oh, right? Man, there's, there's such a need for this, this combination of being confident in who we've been made to be in Christ. But coupled together with that is if I am one with Christ, I am just as equally in need of somebody else that is too. Can you see that? <laughs> in fact, my, my unity with Christ is also my unity with somebody else. In fact, I don't get to be one with Christ unless I'm one with his body. You see that? Yeah. And the thing that we're wanting to overcome the enemy in, so, many, so much of the time, what the enemy will come in and do is cause strife, division, backbiting, and all of it might have a really good reason, usually does. But how many know that Jesus had plenty of reasons not to go to the cross for us? But he did anyway. And because of that, he demolished all the powers of sin. To claim us. Amen? Yes. And he said, now I'm calling you to the same thing. Because you know what? God's fixing to do some overwhelming things in these days. And he's going to do it through his people. He's not just going to do it on his own. He's looking for people that are joined together. 
Amen? And it's not just our little world that he's wanting to help with. I mean, he will. Things in our life, tribulations that are coming our way, be of good cheer. I've overcome. We practice on those things, but God's wanting to do some huge things. Amen? And we can have confidence in that if this area is protected. We say, Satan, you are not going to penetrate this part of my power in God. The unity I've been given with his body. Amen? And we protect that like it's, oh, you're not going to touch that. So we get involved. Amen? But to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a, a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the same, all members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Now, it goes into all the details of what some of those gifts and stuff are. But I want to just see this, this, this concept. This is... This is necessary for us to understand that we are a part of the body of Christ, but we aren't the body of Christ. And that my gifts, and this is very essential too, and this is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to attack who you are, what you bring to the table as if it's not essential. And we don't know. Man, God is is pressing this on my heart. You know what? I pour out my heart even today. And what the enemy comes against me with consistently when I get done is that didn't make any difference at all. You know? That's just because what he that's what he does. You know, liars lie. Right? But he he wants to do the same thing for each one of us. That it doesn't matter if I if I take my place. It doesn't matter. And you know how selfish that is? You know how selfish that is? Because somebody needs you. Yes. Somebody's victory before God is dependent upon your obedience to take your place. Yes. Amen? Good. And where are you getting the source of this? You're getting, getting it from the head. Yeah. Amen? Now, we keep our eyes on Jesus. But the more you look into the, the, the perfect law of liberty in Christ, the more you see reflected yourself as you really are. Amen? And and like Mark says, it becomes a group picture. (laughs) It becomes a group reflection. (laughs) He said, you always see yourself first, but but there's all those people around you that make you part of this. Amen? All right. Overwhelming partnership. It's Christ's completed triumph with us. Ephesians 4, 4 through 16. So this is, you guys are familiar with this. A lot of us are, right? We're we're familiar with it. But can you see the necessity of it in this? It's like I almost didn't want to use these verses because sometimes we're we're familiar with them and we say, yeah, I already heard that. No, you haven't. (laughs) Right? Until we are on the front lines overwhelming with this stuff. It's just a nice thought that we put in the back of our brain while we go do something else and, and have animosity towards somebody and... You know? (laughs) Ephesians 4, 4 through 16. There's one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. (laughs) You don't get to be on your own. You are part of Christ. Amen? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Don't you like that? I like the above all. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers. Amen? But not by ourself. We're seated with, there's the witness. Amen? And Jesus said, you can't love me and hate your brother. You can't even believe in me and not be connected to to my body. (laughs) That's like like my little brother I had. My my grandma, she she used to to sit in this chair and say, oh, I'm just getting so old. I'm just getting so old. And my brother says, 
No, Grandma, just your face. <laughs> you know, we can't be, we can't, we can't know God and just want just part of him. You know, we can't, we can't just, you know, just love part of his body. We, just, just this face. <laughs> My relationship with God is just this face. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's his whole body, right? But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Isn't that, that's almost poetic, isn't it? That's, it's like really nice. So we want to sing about amazing grace. I was a wretch. I'm still a wretch. I, you know, it's like, well, a wretch like me. Grace has covered so much. What really makes grace as amazing is how it takes us into this functionality in the body of Christ of an overwhelming God response. That's, what, that's what's so amazing about grace. It's, just, it's power enabled that it has nothing to do with us individually or our merit, but our witness. We get in him. It activates a power of God that's invincible. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Isn't this interesting? He became a completely overwhelming force and in the process, he imparted gifts to us to be a part of that. Amen? <laughs> now this, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Isn't it so wonderful to get hooked up with somebody who's already been there? <laughs> already knows how to win. Yeah. We get hooked up with him. Now, we have to be on the we have to hit the purity side first. We have to know who we are in him. Yeah. But when we get to know who we are in him, then we start to act like it. He gave his whole, he, gave, he laid down his life to be one with us. He said, the power that you're going to have in me is going to be that same thing, laying down your own life to be one with each other. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro. Carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men. In the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. According to the effective working by which every part does its share. Causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now. We need to make some declarations. But you can go back. I encourage you to go back and read that passage. and Meditate on its parts. Because what's happened in Christ. Is he went and accomplished such a victory. He already overwhelmed all, the, all, all that the enemy could ever do. And now his design. His design in doing that. Was to bring us all together. Yeah. Before, before he laid down his life like that. We were on our own. Right? The amazing thing about that grace is it brings us together in this unity that becomes the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. We overwhelm as the church. Amen? Hallelujah. And actually, this becomes the most rewarding part too. Because the giving of your life, the laying down of your life is where you get the most reward of life. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And, you know, we use that in the realm of giving of an offering. Why do we get, why does giving in offerings become so important? Because it's the practice of laying down something in your own heart for the blessing of somebody else. Amen? So what love comes along to do is to lubricate the joints. Make them functional. 
And something else about gears, it, gears require oil, right? They require lubrication. That's what love does. It causes things to be able to function. Causes, causes us to be able to, to operate in, in, a, in a magnified power that we can never accomplish on our own. Amen? Why don't you stand up with us this morning and let's, uh, let's fill our mouths with some things that... These are weapons. When we, when we declare these things, let them be powerful in our mouths. Amen? So, I encourage you, again, our church app has all of, this, all of these notes, and um, the sermon's actually going to be on there too, but these declarations are so critical for us. We've just heard, how many have heard something that you feel like it's from God today? Yes. Have you received from the heart of God today? Right. You know what? It's so very critical to respond Anytime. This isn't just an altar call for somebody that's never given their life to Christ. This is for us to sit under the presence of God and to allow uh, his revelation to transform our minds. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But it's so important. <laughs> it's like I used to play the guitar and go to master classes. So it, 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 it's important to, to, to receive information and, and understanding about how to do something. But till you sit down and do it yourself, yeah. you have not learned a thing. You have to sit down. You have to, you have to apply it yourself. That's why Jesus said, just don't be a hearer. Be a doer. Amen? He said, the word of faith is right there in your mouth. You got to say it. You begin to say it. And what it does is it takes that truth that's already in your heart. And it releases it and causes it to become faith. Amen? So as we do this now, and I encourage you, let's, let's do this. Do it throughout the week. Let this be something where God is, again, we're not going to have this overwhelming God response if it's just a, a 45 minutes on a Sunday morning. Right. It has to become something that's occupying your thoughts outside of here. Amen? Right. All right. He said, can we please say the declarations? All right. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and say these together. I have been reborn into the body of Christ and freed from the limitations of what I can do on my own. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, let's say it again. I have been reborn into the body of Christ and freed from the limitations of what I can do on my own. Let's do the next one. As I walk in the light of God's presence... I am liberated from partnership with the world. Oh, don't you like that part already? All right, we got to finish it. And am given a significant role in God's overwhelming response. Don't you like that? Ooh, let's say it again. As I walk in the light of God's presence, I am liberated from partnership with the world. And I'm given a significant role in God's overwhelming response. Do you know how powerful that is as truth just in itself? Amen? When you're saying this, you're not trying to make it happen. You're recognizing what has already happened. Amen? And when you say it, what you're doing is you're, you're magnifying. You know, it's kind of like when we magnify God. Is he getting any bigger? No, our revelation of him is getting bigger. So when we begin to declare what God has done, who we are in him, we are magnifying it. It's not getting any bigger. We are just getting to live it more. Yes. We get to recognize it more. It's revealed to us more. Right. Amen? Yes. As I walk in the light of God's presence, I am liberated from partnership with the world and am given a significant role in God's overwhelming response. Say that with a na na attitude to the enemy. Amen? <laughs> Especially when he's making you feel like you're insignificant. Or he's causing there to be a rift with you in the body of Christ. Right? Like, it doesn't matter if I go to church or not. Or if I'm joined with other people in the body or not. No. <laughs> 
I have a significant role in the body of Christ. And you tell the enemy that, and you just, when you do, it's like dropping a bomb on him. You've called in the coordinates, and now he's demolished. Right? Wow, that's good, isn't it? All right, let's, let's do this next one. I cannot be defeated, discouraged, and overwhelmed as I am joined together with Christ and his body. His triumph is being completed through us. Don't you like this, making this an us thing? What that does is it turns it from a me thing into a we thing and a, and a withness, right? Isn't that, isn't that powerful? God likes this kind of stuff. As long as we're, we're caught up in the me thing. Me, 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 me. Even just God and me. No, it's God with us. That Emmanuel is God with us. Amen? All right, let's say this again. I cannot be defeated, discouraged, and overwhelmed as I am joined together with Christ in his body. His triumph is being completed through us. Let's say it one more time. I cannot be defeated, discouraged, and overwhelmed as I am joined together with Christ in his body. His triumph is being completed through us. Next one. My victory is dependent upon the supply I receive from the parts of Christ's body I've been called to partner with. Oh, we need this revelation, don't we? We need to remind ourselves this. Amen? It's not a weakness. <laughs> it's like a SEAL team member saying, I need this guy. If I'm going into battle, I need him. We come off the field, he's coming off with me. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We're joined together. Yes. Let's say this again. My victory is dependent upon the supply I receive from the parts of Christ's body I've been called to partner with. Just a little caveat on this. It's so important what part of the body you're being joined together with. How much they're connected with the fullness of God's revelation. How much this part of the body is not just about being me. This makes sense? Because yeah. the part you connect with is the, the part you're going to get revelation through. And the part you're going to be able to depend on yeah. in the day of battle. Cool. You've got to make sure that the part you're connected with believes in the power of God. Yes. Amen? Yep. And is operating in the love of God. Yeah. Not the condemnation. Right. Not trying to, to, right. to make you feel like you're... you're beat down or you have to serve a man but you have to be connected to somebody that's operating in the fullness of God's love amen oh let's say it again my victory is dependent upon the supply I receive from the parts of Christ's body I've been called to partner with all right let's do another one here as God responds with overwhelming force I get to participate in its dominance as I live, move, and breathe in Christ, partnered together with his body. Isn't that good? Let's say it again. As God responds with overwhelming force, I get to participate in its dominance as I live, move, and breathe in Christ, partnered together with his body. Hallelujah. Father God.